Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Unconventional Attorney Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher Small, and I am the Unconventional Attorney. Today, I'm excited to uh, bring you another Attorney X episode. Uh, If you are unfamiliar with this, I am basically interviewing anonymously law firm owners from around the globe to find out what's working for them, the kind of revenue that they're really making, the kind of challenges that they're really facing, and uncovering all the things that they are afraid to expose out there in the real world under their own names. Now, the only way that I can continue to have these interviews is for law firm owners just like you to come on the show. Um, We all get to learn from the information and the experiences we share, and this is my call to action for you to come and join me as an Attorney X guest. It's very simple, it's 20 minutes, and if you come on, I give you a free t-shirt that you can't get anywhere else. So if you walk around and you see people wearing Attorney X t-shirts, it's because they have taken the plunge and they are Attorney X alumni. To sign up is very simple. All you have to do is go to theunconventionalattorney.com forward slash attorney X. You can pick a date and time that work for you. And when that date and time come, we'll chat. Okay. So that's attorney or the unconventional attorney.com forward slash attorney X. Uh, go and schedule your date today so we can keep up this, this really cool uh, deal that we've got going on. All right. Now let's get into the show. Hello, friends, and welcome to another Attorney X interview. Today, as you can probably guess, I've got Attorney X. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. Awesome. Um, As a reminder to you and the audience, I ask the same questions to every guest on every show and promise anonymity so we can get the raw truth about your law firm. Uh, The goal is for all of us to learn from each other by sharing what's really happening inside our firms. Ready to go? I'm ready. Perfect. Question number one, the hard hitter right off the bat. How old are you? 44. And are you married? I am. Do you have kids? Two kids. What? 19 uh, how old? and 16. How old? Oh, sorry. Uh, 19 and 16. Okay, nice. Um, how long have you been practicing law? Since 2007, so 12 years. All right. And what... What's your sort of like l- lawyer story? Um, did you know you wanted to go to law school from when you were a kid? Like start, start. I want to. I'm always interested on how people even got into law school, and then sort of what what's that? What was that path like? So I hated school uh, in high school. Uh, couldn't stand it, and so I graduated, thankfully, barely, and. Um, I I went to work. I was making, you know, okay money at that point in time for an 18 year old. Um, I joined the military, uh, became a basically became a cop in the Air Force. Um, While I was in the military, I met my now wife who said, you're a smart guy. You should take some college courses. And I was like, I hate school. Can't stand it. Ultimately, I I took some courses uh, to hang out with her, basically. And then that kind of changed my uh, perspective, and I wasn't quite like high school, so I was like, this isn't that terrible at all. And then as my wife now would say, is she could not get me to stop going to school. I kept going and going. So so while I was in the military, I got a police science degree and an associate's degree. Uh, I got out. I worked at an aircraft company, uh, office job basically, and um, got a computer science degree. And then at 29, with uh, children and a wife, I went to went to law school, just kind of said what the hell and went what what was what was the appeal like what why law school and not i don't know something like a phd program or or just something else well, looking back now no i'm kidding um <laughs> nice. nice that's right the... <laughs> whatever whatever you're doing you're doing just fine you're doing just fine for yourself that's what all the lawyers say though and doctors don't be a doctor if you're a doctor don't be a lawyer if you're a lawyer no i i enjoy it and you know i, I talked about being a lawyer for for a long time only i had a wife and I had children and you know you can't just move and go to law school and so I actually kind of had an in at a firm uh, here and you know basically they're like well if you go and and pass the bar then you know we'll basically employ you 
And so I said, well, you know, that's an opportunity that's never going to come again in my life. And so I just kind of jumped at it, thankfully, got through it, passed the bar, and um, and then started working. That's awesome. So they're just like, hey, it's good. we'll give you, we'll we'll wait four years for you to come on. You must be like, the well, I mean, yeah, it was, it was a it was kind of a family friend, uh, sort of, but um, yeah, I kind of interned there during the summers. Um, so I sort of had a job while I was in law school, so that that helped out a lot. Um, and I enjoyed it. It was fun. So I kind of focused on that practice, which was personal injury while I was in law school. So, you know, learned all I could about it. That's great. And and you don't do personal injury now though, right? I do. I mean, I as the primary, so. as a primary yeah, like practice primary. area though, like what you, what you tell people you do is not personal injury, even though you might, you might catch a case here and there, right? Correct. Right. I do what, bankruptcy at this point. Yeah. Okay. And so how, Okay, so you're working for a firm, right? For how long were you working for the firm? Uh, approximately, well, interning wise, 15 years, but 12 ever since I passed the bar. Oh, okay, dang. All right. I didn't realize that. What's funny about, I say this every time because I know, right, you know, like right now, I don't, basically everybody that comes on the show right now, I already kind of know a little bit, but I always right. learn, I always learn these things that I either, you told me before, but I just forgot. But I always learn these new things that are like I just find really fascinating about people, um, and that's one of them. What so what uh, what made you decide to like do your own thing? So, again, as my wife would say, I just kind of jump all over the place and take risks and at least calculated risks and uh, hope they work out for the best. Um, and so, you know, I was working for like you said a personal injury firm. I was a partner. I'd been a partner for about four years. And uh, I had an opportunity where a bankruptcy attorney basically was no longer practicing. And I was basically given the opportunity to take over that firm. And so I thought, again, in my life, well, if it's ever going to happen that I'm going to start my own place, I should probably start one that's up and running and has clients and has staff. And I can just kind of go in and then do my own thing. So I jumped. Was there was there anything in particular that, drew, you know, like, I'm like, this is sort of a sensitive question. I'm glad we're anonymous. But was there anything that sort of why, if you're a partner at a firm, go do your own thing? Like, what what was it that drew you or appealed to you about about that? Sure, I'm still questioning that. You know, because the salary is different from being a partner in a PI firm and owning your own bankruptcy firm. Uh, my wife may still question it also. But um, no, I mean, I think I think ever since. I mean, forever ago, I've always had this in the back of my mind that I want to be a business owner. I want to be able to kind of make my own way, do my own thing, because I think I have good ideas, um, you know, to, to do those things and make make it better, if you will. And so that opportunity, I mean, as a, as a partner in the other firm, I had a lot of leeway. I was kind of the tech guy and the attorney and kind of the HR guy, um, and I enjoyed it. I got along with all the employees, you know, they all liked me, that sort of thing. And so when I had this opportunity, I was like, well, the income is going to go down. However, um, internally, personally, I think I'm going to be much happier um, because I can do my own thing and, you know, make my own way and see what happens. And so, you know, I think that personally, I'm much happier. It's way less stressful and on, on, on the business side, on the law side. Personally, it's it's it's, it's a little more stressful because I'm like, well, maybe I'll have a client next week or maybe I won't. So, but it's a different kind of stress. So, and I enjoy it to this point. Yeah. Yeah. And eventually I think, and I think you've probably reached this point, but eventually if you come to realize that, you know, if you really need to, you can create more clients, you know, like, like, um, it's something that you have a little bit of control over and, and, um, it, that makes it a little less, it doesn't, it doesn't make it not scary. It just makes it a little less scary over time, you know? Yeah, I would agree with that. And now that I'm, you know, going on two years of being in business, um, I, I'm to that point where I'm teetering on the edge that, you know, I don't wake up at 2 a.m. wondering, you know, where I'm going to have to mortgage my house or something. Um, but, but you know, it's it's still, I mean, it's still an unknown. However, it is, uh, I sleep all night now, at least for that purpose. So that's, so that's good. Right. Well, come, what I, what I always used, what I always do is cause I like, I'll be fine for like, a, like, like three months and then all yeah. of a sudden out of nowhere, it won't even be, nothing will even happen. It, it, I'll just yep. get this ping and I'll be like, Oh my God. Oh my God. 
yeah. what's going on exactly uh, um but you know I, what i always do and, and i'm you know I'm, I'm not saying this necessarily for you but also for everybody that's listening is what i always try to do when i'm thinking about that kind of stuff is i just go look you know like things have been consistently happening for however long the chances of of everything just completely stopping is pretty small you know so like just talk your brain out of this whatever this thing is that it's just trying to do to you and you know like get over it you know because because typically things don't just quit you know unless unless you got one main client or something weird like that but um sure right i yeah. agree yeah. yeah so all right so bankruptcy did you now i know that you sort of were, were able to sort of walk in and just take over a, a business did you did, did you have any sort of like did bankruptcy appeal to you at all or was it just like hey this is a good opportunity let's just find a way to love bankruptcy like where where were you at on that on that whole spectrum just from a practice area standpoint <laughs> Yeah. Um, I mean, I knew a little, very little about bankruptcy, um, but it was, you know, if, I mean, you did PI work um, and I think it's gotten worse in the last five years of just, you know, not only do you fight with the insurance company and quote unquote, the defense attorney, but you know, you're, you're now fighting with clients because, you know, they're not getting a million dollars for that $20,000 case. And so now you're fighting with everybody constantly. Um, and so I, I kind of wanted to take a break from that. And bankruptcy, you know, is, is, you know, a lot of form work. Um, I mean, you know, the clients are probably pretty much happy that, you know, that you did what you did for them um, and they have some relief. And so that appealed to me. Um, but I think the biggest thing was just that I could own my own place and this was the best time to do it. So, yeah. And, and so did you basically go from like one day you're a PI attorney, the next day you're like in the bankruptcy game? Yeah, I mean, I was uh, contacted on like <clears throat> New Year's Eve, and by January fifteenth, I uh, I quit my job and oh, took over. Awesome. So it was that's about hilarious. two weeks. That's crazy. crazy. That's crazy. I love it though. Um, what? Um, all right. So then, this is something that you know a lot of people, tons of people, are always thinking about transitioning for for many many different reasons, and they're hesitant because they're like, oh well, it's hard to learn a new new area. So like, what did you do? to get up to speed? Like, how'd you learn? How'd you learn bankruptcy? I took over about a thousand clients, which <laughs> is, I think, I think insane. Um, a, that is crazy. Yes. Um, it, but, you know, number one thing is, is you have to have a great staff, which, which I inherited and my paralegal's wonderful. Like, like she's, she's awesome. Uh, I couldn't ask for anybody better. And so, you know, just with her knowledge, her experience, you know, doing it every day, you know, filing, 300 cases 400 cases a year is what they were doing um i mean she got to see a lot of stuff and so you know between her and just diving kind of into the you know code and going to hearings and listening and you know doing all of that um i figured it out fairly quickly but it was you know it was unnerving at first to make sure that i know what the hell i'm telling my clients is accurate yep and and so did you open well so will this january be three year three three years in year two Year two. Oh, year two. So you're you're like still at, you'll be two years on January. That's awesome. All right, cool. Yeah, so I start January of 18, so 18 and then 19. So I'll start my third year. Yeah, that's crazy. Well. What um did you, so I'm, I'm assuming that you worked out some sort of a deal to get this firm. Was it, uh, did you have to bring any money to the table? Like, did you have any money to get started? Like, what was the startup funding situation kind of like for you sure well i i kind of underestimated the initially the um the amount of clients and and we've talked about this before but i underestimated the difference between getting a bankruptcy client and getting a personal injury client um in that you know personal injury client if you've been in an accident you come in you like me whatever you you hire us on the bankruptcy side you come in you like me now you got to save up money to file so that lag can be a week it can be eight months. Um, I have I've gotten folders from like I don't know a couple months ago from 2017 from the prior attorney, uh, and they come back in. They're like, "Oh, hey, you took over. Okay, here it is." You know, and so that lag is is difficult. And so I underestimated that lag. I underestimated that follow up because that is not anything that I knew prior in the in the personal injury world. And so I I came into it and I put like basically 50 grand of my own money to make it work, to make it run. Um, 
which which may have been tax money uh, for the following for that year, but the, we're we're good at this point. Um, and then and then personally, you know, I had a I had a buyout from my partnership in my last firm, and so that kind of helped sustain the family, if you will, for for about a year and four months, um, while I got this thing, you know, off, on the ground and, and running, and you know, so yep. so far so good. Awesome. What um and I and I know this is. This this isn't a great question, just and you'll see just because of your circumstance. But do you recall like your first client with your business, like not like just the first one that you signed up or the first one? Like how what was that? Where did that person come from? How they did they just call a phone number? But like what what was your first you know bankruptcy client? What was that? What's that sure. story? I, I think it was actually scheduled for the other guy, um, and then you know when I went in and talked to him. Uh, I mean, I, I think I paused that meeting a few times to go in and, and double check things <laughs> with, with my paralegal and go, hey, this, this is weird. What about this? Um, and so, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was a long consultation at that too. But, uh, but yeah, they, I mean, they ended up hiring me and, you know, it, it was, I mean, it was really nothing special other than, you know, I only, there was a real, it was a really weird case. And so there was a lot of nooks and crannies that I didn't really quite grasp at that point in time, but everything, you know, it went through fine. It was, it was good. Isn't it funny how that always happens? I had a, I had a new paralegal start for me, like a, like about six weeks ago. And you know, as it, as it happens, when she starts, like all the weird cases come out, like, you know, like all the bread and butter cases get put on hold and all the strange ones come out that, that have like all these weird things going on. That was my first three months, every weird thing. And, you know, because bankruptcy is federal law, I mean, you can kind of cheat a little bit and, you know, just Google that stuff um, because the code's out there. I mean, it's not, you know, it, there's nothing secret about it. And so that, that helped a lot um, along with, you know, my paralegal's knowledge. So it was, it was, uh, it was taxing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, so but, switch. But, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. No, keep going, well, keep going. I was going to say, but, but at the same time, Again, I have a wife, two kids, you know, house, stuff, lifestyle, et cetera. And so it either, it can't fail. I mean, that's my mindset is there's no possible way that this can fail because I'm kind of all in. And so, you know, in the beginning, the first year, I mean, I kind of did whatever, you know, I mean, I worked every weekend. I worked probably 10 or 12 hours a day every day last year um, because it can't fail. Because if I fail, then, you know, I mean, that, that sucks. So... What was the, I'm curious, what was the, like, how did you work that out with your wife? You know, like, um, <laughs> do you, <laughs> of course that's, it out. <laughs> that's not a great, like, did you, I'm just curious about that because were you able, did you guys just sort of reach an agreement where you're like, look, I'm just going to have to go after this for a little bit and, and I think it can work. And, and she was like, that's cool. I'm going to, I'm going to let you do your thing. And, and like, you know, like what, what? How were those dynamics? Yeah, so like? it, yeah, it's um, well, it was it was interesting because you know by the time I'm I'm a partner for four years, you know at this point I'm I'm making you know probably more money than I have in my life, and then the next year I make the least amount I've made in you know 15 years, um, and so you know that that was a bit rough, um, but she was I mean she was supportive of course it, you know kind of like well if you think you can do it. <laughs> Um, and I'm like, well, if I'm ever going to do it again, this is the best time, you know, this is the best opportunity to take to jump at. And so, you know, it was funny because later, and so she supported me and I mean, she still supports me and, you know, it's, it's growing. So we're doing, we're doing good. But, um, it later she had said something about me being flighty and I kind of took, I was like, oh, that hurt, you know? And, uh, but you know, as I look back, I mean, literally like I grew up in Illinois Halfway through my senior year, uh, I moved to a different state, different city, didn't know anybody. I moved here because my, basically my sister's husband had passed away. So I was like, yeah, I'll go out there and, and help you and, you know, kind of help you with my niece or whatever you may need. And so I did that halfway through my senior year, never left that school district, you know, earlier. And so, um, so I do that. And then I decide I'm working at a, uh, like a convenience store and I decide I'm not going to do this for the rest of my life. That's terrible. So I quit. And then I go look at the military, and within three days I make that decision, and I'm like, if the rest of my family can kind of do it, I can do it too. So I did that, 
And then after I got out of the military, I go work at an aircraft place, and I jump from a kind of a floor job to an office job just just because I applied. I'm like, I'm going to go try that, quit that, go to law school. And then I was like, you know, this, she's probably right. I'm a little flighty. Um, but I try to make, you know, I try to think that it's all been calculated risks. And then, you know, I think, honestly, the military kind of mentally, you know, if you have a no attitude, I mean, you're probably not going to fail because you're just going to push and you're going to work and you're going to do what you need to do to make sure that it's successful. Yep, yep. I wouldn't call you flighty. I would just call you decisive. You know, you try something out, and if you don't like it, you just try out the next opportunity that jumps up in front of you, you know? Right. That's why I try to tell her. That's right. That's well, right. We've been, we've been married for like 23 years, so, you know, she, she knows me. That's right. She knows what's going on. That's cool. All right, great. Good. Well, good for her. Good for you, both of you. Um, what? Uh, all right, so switch gears a little bit. Uh, do you work out of your home, or do you have a traditional office? Like, what's that setup look like? Traditional office. Um, I mean, I have a quote unquote office in my home, but yeah, it's traditional office. Yeah. Okay. And you mentioned already that you have a paralegal, like what are your, what does the personnel look like in your firm? Yep. I have a, I have a paralegal. I myself, I have a paralegal and then I have, I acquired, um, another smaller bankruptcy firm a couple months ago because the attorney wanted to relocate. And so now I've just fallen into apparently taking over firms, um, because I did it once. And so, I actually hired her paralegal, um, and so now she is my paralegal slash, or you know, legal assistant, whatever you want to call it, slash receptionist. Because in bankruptcy, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of little bitty nooks and crannies and questions, and so you can't have somebody at the front desk who doesn't know anything about it. And so because she's a paralegal, she can kind of answer those normal questions that, that come up, which is great, and that saves my paralegal a ton of time. Um, and then about a month ago, I hired a criminal defense attorney who at this point, doesn't need any staff, so. Cool. What, so that's uh, it for us. Uh, yeah, and so I'll, you sort of, by the way, side note, but I think if you can if you can do it, acquiring firms is the easiest way to grow and start fast as well, you know, um, assuming you get it for the right yep. price and, and, it's a, and it's got a decent setup, like, that, that's a good way to go, you know. The problem is everybody, I'm I'm curious. This is a total this is a total tangent. Just because of your specific situation, did you did you have any problem when it came to to figuring out what the value of the businesses were and 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 the people wanting too much money or 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 thinking that things were more valuable than they were? Like, what what was that what was that process like for you? So bankruptcy, I think, is a little weird because. Um, the attorneys has already been paid for like a chapter seven up front before they even file the case. So they've been paid for those matters. Chapter 13s, those fees sometimes are stretched out between, you know, a couple of years, three years, four years, whatever it may be. And so the first firm that I took over, um, he actually doesn't practice anymore. And so he just walked away, but he took the, um, basically the fees from the trustee's office and so I paid zero out of pocket, basically, um, which is why I jumped at it, right? And then, and then the firm that I acquired recently, the issue is, is that, you know, you have to follow these cases for up to five years if it's a Chapter 13. You have to store these files for, in Kansas anyway, it's basically six, seven years after uh, it's over, which means you're storing these files for 12 years. Well, the problem is that nobody wants that case. Like, how am I going to make any money? If I take 150 cases from you that you're getting paid for and all I'm doing is storing stuff. So, I mean, the idea is, is that if you want to get out, then I'm taking the fee that you're earning and you're, <laughs> I mean, we're going to split the fee somehow at a percentage. So, you know, yeah, I had some time of, of acquiring those files and moving and storage, but um, I'm not paying to take a, a, a bunch of cases I'm not going to get paid on just because you want to leave a firm. And so, you know, you work out a percentage with the fees that are left remaining, and then you just kind of absorb the ongoing Chapter 7s that are open, or open and, you know, just kind of work that into it. But, you know, that way they're not paying any money to me necessarily out of pocket to, to take over these cases, and I'm not paying out any money to acquire them. And my, you know, my benefit is what's huge because there's really no downside. 
the upside is, is I get under, you know, I get a percentage of the fees that are already earned. And if there's any more work to be done in the 13, that's additional fees for me. And then, you know, that's 150 extra clients that can tell everybody else about the great experience they had in my office. Did you, yeah, but, and did you talk at all about like phone number or website, like any of those like um, assets that, that might make up the firm? Is there, or, or was just that for these particular firms, was it just not that big of a deal? The first one was, and I got, I got um, basically website and I got phone number. Um, the second one, the phone's forwarded right now and I'm having an issue getting it transferred over to my ownership. Um, website wise, I mean, it says contact me now, but there's really not a lot of traffic on it anyway. So it wasn't it wasn't so, that wasn't that big of a deal where they were like, oh, this is worth X dollars because people are calling the phone all the time or anything like that. Just that wasn't that. Just no. Wasn't. Yeah, because I think again, I think I think bankruptcy is maybe a little bit different um, than than other clients just because those fees are earned and you're not filing bankruptcy again. I mean, you know, for another four years or eight years. So it's a one time. You know, there's really not a lifetime value per se of a, a bankruptcy client, and so yeah. So it's really unique compared to most, I think, firms and most people you've had on your show. Yeah, sure, for sure. Yeah, it's it's uh, you're right, 100. percent What um, what? And I'm guessing because bankruptcy flat flat fee is that how you do it mostly? Like I don't. Yeah, everything's flat fee. Yeah, and that is that is that required? This is sort of like way out of context. I'm just curious though. Is, is that or is that just how everybody does it? Um, generally, it's how everybody does it. They will. They, some attorneys will quote low low amounts. I mean, they'll say, "Oh, it's you know X amount," but then you've got to supply your credit report, or you got to, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not adding in mileage, or I'm not adding in this hearing or that or something. Um, so I'm not I'm not charging people for postage, and I know you've talked about this before, but I'm not charging people for postage and mileage and uh, running the credit report. If I know the credit report for two people, sixty six dollars, okay. I mean, that's just part of the cost, but I'm not going to send you a bill for $35.18 because of postage and whatever else is out there. And I think, I think it's a waste of, I mean, not only is it, you know, I was a lot of things where I was an attorney, and so I kind of look back on those situations, but, you know, if you go pay a divorce attorney five grand and then they send you a bill for $13 for postage, it seems a little, yeah, I mean, it's just minutia. It's terrible. The same token, you know, at, at my PI firm, you know, we would count postage, um, and and they would just put, you know, they would put, they would open up an Excel spreadsheet, and John Smith, they put one letter, and then, you know, 55 cents, and I'm like, how long does it take you to open up a spreadsheet, close a spreadsheet, add the data, and then we got to, you know, add it all up at the end of the case. It's not worth my paralegal's time, who's making 20 bucks an hour, to spend 10 minutes, you know, on three cases, adding in a dollar of postage. No, I mean, it just you could just add in. You could instead of billing one hundred and fifty dollars an hour, just bill one fifty one an hour, and you're right. gonna probably make, make up, up for all the postage that you need. You know, it's like, yeah, I hate that stuff. So you're on. I agree. I'm, we're we're definitely on the same page with that. Um, all right, cool. So what? Let's see. Revenue. It's so like you're in year two. What? What do you make? Like year one. So year one, um, revenue was two fifty one, two fifty. Um, and then 19 will be about 360. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. That's fantastic. So, yep. It's better, better going up than going down. <laughs> that's great. That's great. I love it. And we, and we filed about 20, well, at the end of the year, we'll file about 30 more cases this year than last year. So, you know, that's roughly two and a half a month, give or take. Yep. I love it. What, um, all right, how many, so I know you talked about how much you're working like at the beginning, like what do you, what are you working on average now? Like how many hours per week? And, and um, so I have to sort of like preface this question by saying, I know that we're all sort of, many of us at least are always sort of thinking about things, sort of like dabbling here and there. But I'm talking about just like work, 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 you know, like how many hours are you putting in work, work every week? Sure. Um. I mean, right at the moment, I would say honestly, probably fifty. Um, but it it varies. I mean, last week, 
I, honestly, well, this earlier this week, like I just can't get out of bed. So, you know, we usually open around eight ish, but you know, one day I was here at nine and then I left at four. Um, but, but most days I wake up at three o'clock with some great idea. I'd say some stupid idea, but some great idea. And then I can't go back to sleep. So I just come to work at five 30, but I work on that. I'm not really working on like bankruptcy cases per se. So, and then that's more of a hobby to a degree for me. So, yep. Yeah, you're like I, I love. I like the business side of it, so I can't. I just can't get enough of that kind of stuff, you know. Um, right. Yeah. How are you? Yeah, it's the kind of thing where it's fun, you know. So it doesn't feel like it doesn't. That kind of stuff is fun to do. So it's not actual work. What? Um, how do you get? How are you getting most of your clients right now? Um. So, the first. Well, okay. Right now, honestly, it's just Facebook. That's it. Nothing else. Um organically I come up in the map pack in the top three of Google. So since that occurred, um, that, the reason I only do Facebook is because last year I spent a lot of money on Google ads and you know, bankruptcy stuff's roughly 12 to 17 bucks a click, give or take, which is a lot less than PI. Um, but you know, I'm spending this money and yeah, I get a few clients here and there. Nobody knows where they, where they saw me at. Nobody can say, oh, I went to Google and I clicked on your ad. They just say, you know, I saw you on the Internet. Okay. Well, I'm paying 15 bucks for a click, and I don't even get their information. And so for bankruptcy anyway, you know, my theory is and was is that, you know, I have clients who are stressed out about money, stressed out about work, and, and stressed out about their entire life. And so what they're doing is they're laying in bed at 3 a.m. when they wake up like I was, and they're just scrolling through Facebook and looking at everybody else's lives and how they're going on vacation every other week. And so that kind of brought me to the realization that, you know, I should do Facebook ads. And so I did that and I do a lead form. Um, and so, you know, for roughly five to seven dollars, I get their name, email and phone number, which I think is more valuable than Google ads, especially now that I'm in the map pack. And usually I show up page one, top of page two normally i mean for my regular website that's cool what uh so you're just doing like a straight up like a like a legit advertisement though on facebook right so not content stuff not 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 the content stuff that i'm talking about most of the time right yeah literally it's a goofy picture of me and like bankruptcy and some you know a couple things with that and that's it and i mean i spend you know it's 10 10 to 15 bucks a day and i get roughly two to three forms a day give or take yeah, it, it worked out really well. Nobody's doing it, knock on wood, yet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, it's it's uh you know some people might be doing it, but there's it, there's a skill to it too, right? So to be able to get that, that's pretty good. Um, it's not uh there there's it's not easy. Um, so even if you think even no, if you know about it, it's not easy to to execute. You know, so that's good. Right. It's good that you're getting that. And Facebook, Facebook will do a free like advertising, you know, um, session with you and create an ad and do all of that. Um, and create an audience, you know, help you out, whatever. So I did that, shared my screen, and he, the guy who helped me said, you know, we get a lot of, we generally want to say videos, 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 right, which is normal. Um, but he was like, but honestly, your picture uh, is generating more than we think video. So he, the Facebook guy left my photo on there as opposed to a video. Um, however, in my PI firm, we advertise really heavily on TV. So you know, my picture has been out there for 12 years um, on TV ads and phone books and everywhere else. So I don't know if that's just, a, you know, them them saying, hey, I know this. I don't know this person. I don't know. Yeah, that's interesting. I have, an, I have a, <clears throat> well, you probably know about this. We, we'll talk about it when we're done, just so we don't give every, all the secrets away right here. But there's a way that you can capture some of that Google ads traffic too and clicks through on your um, maps page and stuff like that. Um, back to mm -hmm. Facebook. So, uh, all right, cool. What? Uh, let's see. What's your biggest challenge right now? Um, Business-wise, probably the balance between what's working, what's not working. Easiest way to um, uh, streamline things, if you will. Between, I mean, I I use Max, which is great, and the CRM I use works great. Um, the, you know, email system I use works great. <laughs> and, you know, so it's kind of combining all of those things together to make it the, I mean, there's an easy, 
all of those things working together is great, and generally they and they do basically what I need them to do. Um, but I'm trying to dig a little bit deeper and trying to streamline it even more, and that's where the logic of, of kind of going through those programs and figuring out where the data is is the difficult part, if that makes sense. Yeah. And that's and that's the stuff just because of my you know my you know the computer degree and my hobby of that, I enjoy doing that kind of stuff. So. You know, while I think a lot of other attorneys kind of hire that stuff out, I kind of do all that stuff myself. Yep, yep. So, all right. So, so having those as your challenges, what, um, what sort of the big, your well, not big, or just what are your sort of your goals for the next year? Like, what do you, what are you trying to accomplish? So, I think revenue-wise, especially with a new attorney, I mean, I think we can hit five hundred, if not six hundred thousand next year in revenue. And then, um, honestly, I just, I think next year I want to, I don't mean slow down, but I mean settle down as far as, you know, I, I started the new firm two years ago, and then I acquired another bankruptcy firm, and then I hired another attorney, and so nothing has been calm, if you will, and so maybe this next year we can just kind of figure out, you know, what we're doing, everybody can kind of settle into place, and and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, that's and that's the normal that's sort of the normal course of most successful businesses anyways as you grow for a little bit, then you kind of catch up. Then you grow. Right. Then you catch up, right? Then you cuz your systems and stuff will begin to take a toll if you grow too fast um to the point of breaking if you're not careful. So um sure. that's cool. Love it. What uh okay. So last two questions. Then we're done, man. Then you're off the hot seat. Yeah. What yeah. um if you were going to let's see. Let's talk um Think about from when you started your firm. If you were going to go back and tell yourself something, or give yourself a piece of advice, what or do something different, what what would what would that be? I would say um, learn the business side of the practice area, and not assume it's similar to the one you were just in. Yeah. Yep. Oh, because it just mean the lag time and the things like that. Right. Just not having like go. Oh, hey, look, they like me. They're going to hire me. Well, yeah, but they got to come up with two grand. You know that kind of thing. So yeah, I mean, I think that's probably the biggest piece of advice I would tell myself would be to start earlier on the follow up, start earlier on the email drips and all of that, for sure. Perfect. And then last is what sort of uh, if you can give all the all the law firm owners out there, a, um, you know, a piece of advice. Something that's working for you, some something that that you want them to hear. Like what what would that be? Um, as you would say, this is this is woo woo, uh, but but it's 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 grown on me as I get older. Um, but but honestly, I think that you personally, I think you need to figure out what you want to be in that office or in that business. Do you want to be the lawyer and just work? Then you need to hire. You know, a CEO, or you need to hire an office manager. You need to hire somebody that's going to do that other work. Do you want to, you know, be the business owner? And then you need to hire a lawyer to do the work. I mean, to a degree, right? Um, or do you want to be the boss? I mean, it just kind of depends. So, I mean, I think my biggest advice is, is as you go through your business and it's growing, you have to figure out what role you want to play, and then figure out a way to play that role and and dump the rest of the stuff onto employees or somebody else. Yeah. And I think, and to, and to add on that real quick, I would also just say to, to to know and be okay with the fact that whatever you want to do is is fine, you know, like sure, not, absolutely. Because I think you know, there's kind of there's there's a little bit of peer pressure out there, and maybe just the idea of what an attorney looks like or does, and what a law firm owner looks like or does, and just to know that it's okay if you want to do something different, you know. I I agree. I don't. I don't. Uh... But again, having multiple, you know, things that I've done in my background, I um, I wear jeans every day. I do not wear a suit. I don't even wear khakis. I just don't. And when people come in, they're like, it's casual Wednesday? And I'm like, every day is casual here because you want me to be comfortable. You want me staff to be comfortable, and we want to be in a good mood. And you know what? I don't think they care one bit. Now, the other attorneys, they're like, were well, you a lawyer? I'm like, just as much as you, only I'm a lot happier. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I think you can you can kind of I mean you know within the rules and, and whatnot you can do whatever you want to do. You don't have to stick to the traditions of of uh, law offices 100 years ago. That's right, for sure. 
Cool, cool, cool. All right, well, thank you so much for your time and your transparency, and welcome to the Attorney X Alumni Association. Yeah, man, I'm looking forward to my shirt. <laughs> it's coming, it's gonna be coming for sure. Thank you. All right. That's a wrap, everybody. Thanks again for listening. I really appreciate your time and attention. And a reminder, if you wanna keep the Attorney X series going, there's only one way to do that, to get more of you on the show. To schedule a time to talk with me, talk about your firm anonymously, and get that free t-shirt, go to theunconventionalattorney.com forward slash attorney X. That's theunconventionalattorney.com forward slash attorney X. Can't wait to have you on the show. See ya.